So in this part, we want to talk about an example. Yeah, so this would be a complicated example of a genus three surface or a three hole torus. And uh, we will pass an axis through the middle hole and rotate this surface by 180 degrees. So as you can see physically that rotation will leave no fixed points at all. And we will show that since there are no fixed points, the Lefschetz number should also be zero. So this will be quite a job to show this. So you have rotated it by 180 degrees as marked in the figure. So F is this rotation. So F goes from X to X, 180 degree rotation about the vertical axis passing through the central hole. So now we want to show the left shift's number is zero because you can see there are no fixed points here. Okay, so let us write this down. So this map is F from X to X. This is the rotation. And this induces the map between the homology groups. So first we talk about the map between at dimension zero. So as you know, the three hole torus consists of single point yeah, so this was in the first lecture itself. So this will contribute plus one to the left shift's number. So now we have to talk about H1 and H2. So let us draw the basis. Yeah, so this is the basis of H1. So basis of H1 is six loops. So we will rename these loops also. Say, say this loop is beta one. Write it down to beta one. Then we have another loop. beta 3 so when you rotate it beta 1 and beta 3 get interchanged so I will just correct the orientations all of them uh, yeah have the same orientations so beta 1 and beta 3 get interchanged now beta 2 goes to itself when you rotate it Okay, what about the other three cycles? So one is here. We call it alpha one. So we are, uh, I will remind you again, we are talking about H1 or the cycles which generate H1. And we have alpha three. So when you rotate, alpha one and alpha three get interchanged. So I'm, I should draw only actually one alpha two here, but I'm drawing two of them. Both of them are homologous because they represent the same element. And I'm drawing it twice because alpha one, alpha two prime and alpha two change positions and alpha two and alpha two prime are homologous. So they are, they have the same homology class. And uh, I've drawn it twice so as to show that alpha two goes to alpha two prime. So beta one goes to beta three, contributes minus one to it. Alpha one goes to alpha three, contributes minus one. You know H1 has, you multiply H1 by minus one raised to the power of one. So that is minus one times whatever there is at H1. And you have minus one coming from interchange of beta one to beta three, and another minus one coming from interchange from alpha one to alpha three. Beta two goes to beta two gives you zero. Alpha two goes to alpha two prime, that also gives you zero. 
so the total is now what the total is minus 1 yeah plus 1 from h0 minus 2 from h1 total is minus 1 so now we want to show that the f star map from h2 x to h2 x contributes plus 1 to the left shift number now this will contribute plus 1 to left shift number if we show it is the identity so uh, the rest of the slide we are going to or the rest of this lecture we are going to spend on showing this f star is a isomorphism so let us first draw diagram and we will show its commutativity so we are going to show f star as an iso by first establish, uh, establishing this following isomorphism so there's a point x and then we will describe this isomorphism so all this has to be done now we are going to write x comma x minus y so what is this point y yeah where x is just a point of space x y is also a point of space x but y is nothing but image of x under f so y is equal to f of x so say this point is x then you rotate it by 180 degrees you get y yeah so this is not exactly what you will get after rotation but uh, yeah you can understand what I mean to say so y is equal to f of x under the 180 degree rotation because f is nothing but the rotation map so we want to prove the commutativity of the diagram above yeah so the diagram on the left side we have to show it is commutative and then it should imply that f star is the identity and we are done so to proceed we need to first construct a long exact sequence of a triple so first let us recall the long exact sequence of a triple so you have a triple x comma a comma b a and b are subspaces of x and they are related as b is contained in a a is contained in x so this is the long exact sequence we get yeah homology group of a comma b then homology group of x comma b then homology group of x comma a then you decrease index by one and do it again h n minus one a b yeah now let us fix this a b yeah x is already given to us x we will take as the three hole torus so let us take x as x minus a single point take b as the one skeleton of x yeah so the one skeleton means you so the one skeleton means one cell of the space yeah as we described in the first lecture so i will write it down x minus x it deformation retracts to x1 so basically then if this is a deformation retract then homology pair of a comma b is zero yeah because space x minus a point is equivalent to its one skeleton because it yeah it contracts to that space so this is zero so let us mark it in the map so this is zero and this is zero so we so we have established the isomorphism between h and x comma b to h and x comma a so h and x comma a is nothing but h2 x comma x minus x so or you can say h2 x comma x minus y now the point i'm trying to make is this that x comma b is not x x comma b is x comma x1 so we have to establish that x comma x1 is same as x comma x that is h2 x comma x1 is same as h2 x 
and that you can establish by drawing the long exact sequence of pair x comma x1 and say h2 x1 is 0 because x1 is just one skeleton. So we still have to prove that f star the map from h2 x to h2 x is the id map. So to do this we construct a new map called g. So this map g is homotopic to identity and is same as the map f in the neighborhood of this point x. Also this map g is nothing but the id map outside a disk in uh, this 3 torus which contains point x and y. So you notice this disk is going to be pretty big because y is 180 degrees reflection of x. So outside the disk g is nothing but identity. Now we will reconstruct the commutative diagram on the left hand side or the bottom left of the screen for a map such a map g. Yeah. Now since g is homotopic to identity it induces identity across the top row of this diagram. Yeah, that, that is pretty much clear. Similarly you have these isomorphisms from long exact sequences and since g equals f near x it induces the same map as f in the bottom row of the diagram. Yeah, by excision this map is induced. Now since f and g are same or almost the same so this diagram which is for g essentially so notice that the bottom holds because f star is equal to g star in the neighborhood of x and y so this diagram automatically induces the other square yeah, at the bottom hand left and that proves that f star is the id and that will give us plus one.